Hey everyone, I was thinking about some scriptures over this past week that are starting to make more and more sense to me other than my perception of them uh, in the past. And I was raised a Calvinist, and but yet I have worked with Armenian types of people in specific viewpoints of the scripture, like the good ground or abiding in the vine, which are very, very important scriptures um, about who can come, who can't come, um, who saved, who isn't saved, uh, do, or can we lose our salvation? Do we, or, 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 or are, are we locked in? Is it a double negative? Nobody can snatch them out of my hand. And of course, there's a lot of debate on this issue, but I don't, because I'm not a debater and I'm not an academic, I just wanted to share with people the things that have happened to me recently. And I think the Lord has shown me even a greater understanding of these type of verses and what he's talking about. Now, everybody knows that the Lord is predominantly speaking to the believer. He's predominantly speaking to the believer. The church is not meant for the world. It's not meant for the wicked, but it's for the believer. It's for the one who, ha who has a love for the truth that might be saved. The one who works out their salvation with fear and trembling. That's who the Bible's written to. And, you know, when we try to examine others without examining ourselves first, that's a very dangerous thing, because the fact is that we're all fallen uh, in, in our natural bodies, the old man, and we must strive to enter in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what I believe what is simply what the uh, vine, abiding in the vine and the branches is talking about. It's talking about abiding in the Lord, not looking at ourselves, not looking at our own um, dogmas of ourselves, but only looking to him because the natural mind tends to want to analyze and, 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 you know, put information down factually, but that's not how the spirit works. The spirit works through, uh, revealing truth to us as our mind can receive it. So this is why you have so much, uh, battling doctrinally, uh, within say, for lack of a better term, denominations. So anyway, so abiding in the vine, let's just say you have a love for the truth that you might be saved. Let's assume that uh, we are good ground, the good ground, the ones that are deep rooted in Christ, who have a love uh, for Christ even more than ourselves. Well, then we're, the Lord's going to do a pruning in us and pruning be, uh, of the vine dresser is going to cut things off in us that um, that he doesn't want there. Things that um, hold up our sanctification, shall, shall shall we say? And this is what uh, this is what I've been learning. Uh, but you have to look at yourself from the standpoint that you are fallible. You are fallible humanity, and that the Lord is doing a work within the fullness of our lives. We don't ever get to the point, I don't believe, uh, where we're totally sanctified um, human beings. Uh, I think probably until the time we're ready to to die. And even then, um, there's still, um, there still some imperfections in us because we could never hope to be perfect while we're in, in the world. But, Judging, judgmentalism, judgmentalism is based on pride, based on thinking that you're above somebody else, that you're superior in some way to other people. And I have to say that I read a lot of this about from a man who died and saw the backbiting and fighting amongst people and all the depravity. And, and one of the, one of the things that he said, and I, I guess was sort of a, sort of a um, view of hell is everybody was arguing that they're superior to other people. 
um, and it's a horrible thing. And they were also grabbing it. I don't know if alcohol, the spirits were grabbing at alcohol, look at watching people in the world grabbing at alcohol or cigarettes or, um, they, you know, they were just, uh, they were disembodied spirits, but they still had the same lust for things of the world that they had never overcome. Uh, and I was reading this book and it's, it's fascinating to me because, of course, I had a stage one NDE when the Lord was next to me. So, um, it was, uh, it made me do a lot of thinking and the man, uh, that had this experience had accepted the Lord probably when he was about 11 years old and he hadn't realized and thought much about the Lord, but he hadn't, re but yet the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him and gave him a chance to be, come back to life and, and, uh, and write these books. Um, who became a medical doctor years, years later. It was a fascinating read, but, um, he sh I learned something in reading that, and this guy uh, would s talk about things, like in the book he talked about, where there was peop people found in the prison camps of Nazi Germany that seemed to be in fairly good health, and they thought this one man, for instance, had been there but a few months, because despite the deprivation, he, he wasn't starving, and he wasn't sickly. But amazingly, the man had been there since 1939. And I've heard this before from Dr. Grace years ago, that there are people that there has been so little self in, self in them and uh, love for other people. And that's a, that's a Christ type of um, uh, function that the Lord actually sustained their flesh uh, past all kinds of deprivation. And there's a principle in this. And so I wanted to read 1 John 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. And uh, one can twist this verse to say that they no longer sin. I'm reading off my blog here. Who have been born again, yet what is what they what it is actually saying? What the verse is actually saying is it's saying, "Whosoever abideth in the vine, sinneth not." Also known as walking in the spirit, and when you walk in the spirit, you don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. There's not any self in you to get in the way because you're walking in the spirit of the Lord. But the problem is, a consistent abiding in Jesus Christ is required. And even the greatest of the apostles fell short this mark because of their own fallen flesh. And Paul talks about this in Romans 7.17. And also in Romans, it talks about how we all do the same things, how we're all fallible, how we're all in need of a Savior. So it's a, it's a great disservice to not recognize your fallibility when dealing with other people whether it be the wicked or brethren. And this is this is a trap. This is a trap. And the Lord's been showing me these things. Um, so I also write, what I wrote is, the apostles fell short of the smart because of their flesh, Romans 7, 17, and thus needing forgiveness by grace of the Lord throughout their lives until they finished the race set before them. In other words, they consistently focused their walk on the Lord and not on themselves. But if you get to the point uh, th that you start um, thinking that uh, you're so sanctified that you're above um, above uh, wickedness, then you deceive yourselves, and that's what's dangerous. And then I wrote, Addic additionally, the wicked, those who cannot help but sin, who have never been born again, who have not seen him or known him, okay, cannot help themselves as sin is their nature. Does one beat a dog? For being a dog, or does one have compassion? So we, so how much more should we have compassion for a brother or sister who stumbles and falls during the trials of life? Um, 
We cannot deny the very grace that is continually shown in us. I'm taking bits and pieces out of this. And then I go down to another verse that I found is um, unfortunately been misused, I think. And that is 1 John 4 is used to identify the Holy Spirit from counterfeit spirits as to not be deceived by false teachers and others claiming to be of God. That's what 1 John 4 is written for. It was never intended to be used as a soapbox to aggrandize ourselves to others or to cast aspersions devoid of, devoid of any truth because of what they can see in their own lives that they do this. I don't think anybody would do this uh, purposely deceive others unless they're just totally selfish uh, like like many of these TV evangelists do, uh, that have no interest in truth at all. It's just they're making money using the name of Christ. I don't think most actual brethren really do that. I think it's because of their own understanding of the scriptures that, that they, they, they foul up. And anyway, so what I'm trying to say is the good types of ground, the... Uh, abiding in the vine, this all has to do with our heart towards the Lord. Do we have a love for truth that we might be saved? We have to push in with him so we allow him to do some pruning, to do some sanctification in us. And I think the ones that don't have a heart to push in with him um, are probably those that maybe have seen something of the Lord in their lives, uh, had some interest for a short time, but um, but ultimately were not good ground, are not good ground. And it's really not our job to try to figure that out. What our job is, is to do is to make sure that we are being good ground, that we are having compassion for others, that we are entering in with Jesus Christ, that we are abiding. It's not, the Bible's not written for the condemnation of other people, because if they don't have the Lord, or they don't move in the Lord, they're not elect of God, they're already condemned. So, we don't have to worry about that, but what we have to worry about is seeing Jesus in everything uh, that we do, seeing him in other people, even people that are unsaved, seeing Christ in in them, um, not not uh, pick them apart and beating them over the head, but to have compassion and see Christ in others. Because the Lord can use people that aren't even his. The Lord can move through people that aren't even his. Like the, uh, like the Jewish man in the prison camp who decided to love rather than hate. And that's what kept him alive. And there's a principle in this. There's a principle in abiding in the vine. There's a principle in the good types of ground. And that is to make sure that we push in uh, ourselves. We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. And uh, not simply think we've arrived. Okay. Good day.